Hey everyone, PJ here, and I've got an interesting little topic for us today. So, this failed abortion right here recently tried to make a hit piece on fellow YouTuber Wendigoon, and it backfired spectacularly. This scrotum sucker right here goes by in praise of shadows, but throughout this video I'm going to call him Needle Dick, because I feel that's a more appropriate name. So, Needle Dick made a video where he <clears throat> exposes Wendigoon as a <clears throat> fascist, and boy did it backfire. Boy, am I ready to tear this guy's ass up worse than a night at Taco Bell, and don't take that out of context. But first, this video is sponsored by Rage Shadow Legends. Just kidding, they didn't reach out to me because I'm not cool enough. If you're not aware, Wendigoon is a horror conspiracy theorist YouTuber with several million subscribers that, as you will hopefully come to see, should not be seen as the wholesome, southern, friendly dad persona that he has publicly constructed around himself in the past several years. And that, like many people who talk about being Christians as much as he does, has a dark past with deep ties to far-right extremism. Is it just me, or does this guy sound like a calmer version of PC Principal? Capiche? You're associating Italian-Americans to intimidation tactics? You better watch your microaggressions, bro! Well, his work has never been of personal interest to me. We share a similar focus on topics that we like to write about, but our similarities basically end there. I have no need or desire to hear five hours of opinions on Blood Meridian from a 21-year-old millionaire who got famous around the age of 19. Okay, what does that have to do with anything? I'm sensing a little bit of insecurity. And I know that is probably the most boomer thing that I have ever said. Apologies for that. Yeah, probably. If you're going to make a hit piece on someone, at least stay on topic there, needle dick. And I don't know if you can actually really truly be a good cultural critic, with a voice that has a definitive perspective, without several years of genuine, independent, lived experience away from the home that you were raised in. And in his case, he became exceptionally wealthy by the time that he was 19 or 20. Dude! Stop bringing up that he's wealthy. Nobody gives a shit and has nothing to do with the subject at hand. This guy probably thinks that all billionaires are evil, like Jeff Bezos. So if you leave the home and immediately become famous and rich, without having to ever actually truly struggle, can you be considered to have ever actually had lived experience at all that would qualify you to give criticism on works of art about the experience of average and poor people? I would argue not. And if that is the case, why would your perspective matter as a critic? Not to mention the fact that Wendigoon was raised in a very wealthy family. Dude, shut up. We know he's wealthy. Why the hell does that matter? My god, listening to this guy talk, he's making me lose brain cells. Me too, Duck Bear. We're not even halfway in. Lord, give me strength. There are many things that are red flags that we could talk about, from the bizarre gun ownership. How exactly is owning a gun a red flag? Yeah, people own guns. Get over it. Besides, more often than not, guns are only used as tools. Duck Bear? Shut up. The flagrant use, from my perspective, of his religion as a shield from criticism, to the belief that he at one point followed many far-right accounts on Twitter from Kyle Rittenhouse to Parler, the social media website where the January 6th insurrection was in part planned. People said, oh, he only followed them. But that doesn't mean that he agrees with them. I mean, that's a fair point. Just because you're following someone doesn't mean you agree with or endorse what they say. For instance, I've been subscribed to Ali Coca for a while now, and he's one of the users I look up to the most. And while I agree with the vast majority of things he said, he's also said some things that I don't agree with. For instance, when he claimed that this plea could beat Spongebob in a fight. My point is, it's possible to follow someone on social media and disagree with that person on certain things. We could talk about his past and supposedly being a founding member in an online conspiracy theory group that, according to him, snowballed out of control into being a white supremacist neo-Nazi organization called the Boogaloo Boys. His online username at the time was Boogaloo Boy, and he claims to be the first to have started using it, but that he left the group and became Wendigoon after things started to get out of hand. And this is not a conspiracy theory in itself. Shockingly, he literally has said so in writing. As you'll see, he was just like, oh geez, sorry guys, about starting a violent hate group, guys. Sorry that people got killed. I totally didn't mean to do all that. My bad. He literally says this in the most manipulative way possible. Even if he is the one who started the Boogaloo Boys, how is it his fault that they became an unhinged neo-Nazi group? Hell, 
You even said that Wendigoon distanced himself from the group he started after they sprung out of control. So how does that make Wendigoon a bad person? Oh, but if Wendigoon didn't try to distance himself from the Boogaloo Boys, you would have said, GUYS, Wendigoon is part of a neo-Nazi skinhead hate group, GUYS! So he's basically damned if he does, damned if he doesn't. Because isn't that what you're supposed to do if you're part of a group that you don't want to be associated with? Also, it should be noted that the Boogaloo Boys are known for wearing Hawaiian shirts. And guess who else always has on a Hawaiian shirt? <laughs> are you serious?! So the fact that Wendigoon wears a Hawaiian shirt means he's a neo-Nazi. Uh, you might want to brace yourself for this, Needle Dick, because this is going to blow your mind when you hear it, but, uh... THEY'RE LITERALLY WEARING A HAWAIIAN SHIRT IN THIS EXACT VIDEO! HOW DO YOU NOT SEE THAT?! OH, THE IRONY! IT'S TOO MUCH! So, by your own logic, Needle Dick, you're a neo-Nazi skinhead! Wait until you find out that Hitler... <gasps> WAS A VEGAN! Well, now we're gonna cancel all vegans, because apparently if you're a vegan, that obviously means you support Hitler. Sorry, I don't make the rules. You know, I didn't think it was possible for someone to unironically have takes that are this easy to debunk. I thought that person only existed in the shower. But apparently, I have been proven wrong. My god! At one point, he posted on his subreddit and wrote, Someone asked me about my old Boogaloo Boy persona. So I made my response and thought I'd share it to set the record straight. Again, I hate being political. But I wanted to clear this up. Love y'all. Thanks. The statement that he included with this read. Alright, so I'll go ahead and make my official statement here. Because better to come straight from me. Over two years ago, I was among the first to begin using the term Boogaloo. Originally, it was a rendition of Che Guevara's. Not that he was a good person by any means. Code word for revolution. And I have always been a proponent of freedom and liberty. I believe in the divine rights of every human, and therefore, aspects of self-independence are important to me. So I began using the word in small settings, and then decided to make a meme page using the name as no one had yet done so. To give you an idea, my name was Boogaloo Boy, and several have pointed to me as being the original and started the Hawaiian shirt thing, as I've always just worn those shirts. However, as the term became mainstream, more ideas began to come into the group. Everything from Antifa members to fascists wanted in on it, and the original idea became muddled and broken. I always meant it as a for the people thing, yet it quickly became something else. To give you an idea, I watched the same news station call it a far leftist movement and a far right movement in the same day. It became something I didn't want to be a part of, and so I left. I dropped the name, took a break, and decided to talk about things I enjoyed, like conspiracies and movies, under the new title, Windagoon. It was something I acknowledge, but am not a part of anymore for what it became. Some of my current followers and friends were with me then, but I'm not a part of that anymore. So, do you remember when armed men were arrested a few years ago for planning the kidnapping of Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmire? That was the Boogaloos. Do you remember when white people showed up at the George Floyd protests and caused property damage and violence in the hopes that black people would be blamed for that? That was the Boogaloos. A great deal of their members were spotted in the Capitol during the January 6th insurrection. In 2020, they killed several police officers in a drive-by shooting in Oakland, hoping that black people would be blamed for the violence in an attempt to create racial tension. The reason they use the word Boogaloo is in reference to a meme that says Civil War II Electric Boogaloo. I love how you brought up a whole bunch of horrible shit that the Boogaloo boys did right after you read Wendigoon's post explaining that he left the Boogaloo boys because of what the group became. I don't even have to debunk your argument! You literally just debunked yourself! And even then, none of the stuff you brought up was Wendigoon's doing. It was the doing of the Boogaloo Boys. So, again, how the hell is any of this Wendigoon's fault? Oh wait, it's a group that he was a part of a long time ago, so everything they do is his fault. This strikes me as one of those people that think all white people should be punished because their ancestors own slaves. Or people that think that if you're black, you're automatically guilty of all crimes committed by African Americans. And it doesn't take a genius to tell you that both of those ideologies are fucking stupid. First off, I have tried and failed to find any connection to the word Boogaloo to Che Guevara. In fact, when you Google Che Guevara Boogaloo, you just get things related to Wendigoon. When you type in Che Guevara word for revolution, you get things related to Wendigoon. You can literally see the proof right behind him. And only one of those results was related to Wendigoon. After this, he talks about Antifa and other political things like that. 
And since I don't really fully understand the whole Antifa argument thing, I'm just not going to comment on that because I'm fairly confident I'll end up putting my foot in my mouth. That's one of the many reasons I don't like to get political. And I hope that this is becoming obvious to you as well. In my opinion, there is a regular pattern of behavior there, from supporting Rittenhouse to having multiple ties to other far-right extremist figures. That I think a clear picture is painted that he does not mean this as a communist kind of thing, and seemingly more so means people as a very select group. Windagoon is very publicly friends with Turkey Tom. They have been seen together on multiple occasions, and I have seen online mentions that Tom was either at his wedding or at the very least was invited. Tom has been accused of using the N-word multiple times in private conversations, including these screenshots of texts that are alleged to be real. And he has also been accused of saying that the upper tiers of his Patreon were intended for Jews with deep pockets. Okay, I'm going to keep this brief since Turkey Tom is a pretty controversial figure within the commentary community. While I'm not going to defend his use of the N-word, you also have to remember that this was a long time ago. Tom was pretty young when he said those things. Windagoon is publicly connected to the Internet Historian, and has even appeared in his videos. The Internet Historian publicly said that his birthday was April 20th. It is not and has only said that as a joke because that is Hitler's birthday. No, he did not! Yes, it's true that April 20th was Hitler's birthday, but that's not what comes to most people's minds when they hear 420! 420 is weed day! How the fuck did you even come to that conclusion? As someone who is on the autism spectrum, I can safely say, ARE YOU FUCKING RETARDED?! Windagoon is publicly friends with Donut Operator and even retweeted a photograph of the two of them hugging. Donut Operator is a gun-crazed, very far-right YouTuber with 4 million subscribers. Notice how he uses terms like gun-crazed and far-right when talking about Donut Operator in an attempt to make him seem unhinged. Whose career consists of him reviewing footage of police officers shooting and killing people. He was once a cop himself, before he made more money making YouTube videos and retired. His content is very pro-state, pro-cop, pro-gun, and pro-death to people who don't share his beliefs propaganda. That's a peculiar way of saying no girl will ever sleep with me. But in all seriousness, calling this guy's videos propaganda is a pretty far reach if you ask me. At the time of me making this, I've never seen any of Donut Operator's videos, so I can't say for certain. But considering this is coming from you, and it's already been established that you can't be trusted, I'm going to take that with a grain of salt. For example, one of his videos is titled, Predator Takes Shotgun to the Face, and features a picture of him smiling in the corner of the thumbnail next to an image of a terrified man about to be executed by cops, with the text that reads, Head Removal. Oh god, you're one of those people! You know the ones, the kind that protect pedophiles. Honestly, I don't blame Donut Operator for being happy that a predator was executed. If you ask me, people who kill pedophiles are doing the Lord's work, and you can't convince me otherwise. The only good chomo is a dead chomo, and I will take that with me to the grave. If this is seriously the hill that you want to die on, I have a pretty good idea of where you belong. He's a man of no conviction, claiming to be very against the government and for the rights of the people, while at the same time giving a warm embrace to one of the biggest fascist bootlickers on the internet. Take a shot every time this guy says the word fascist. Disclaimer, I am not responsible for anything that happens to your liver. Seriously, it's people like Needle Dick over here that are the reason why the term fascist has lost all of its meaning. Pick up a thesaurus and lose the stick up your ass! He has collaborated with Nick Crowley, who constantly makes money through the most morbid and shameful true crime content of showcasing the last minutes of people before they are suddenly and unexpectedly killed. It's true crime, what are you expecting, sunshine and rainbows? If I click on a true crime video, I don't expect to watch an episode of Barney the Dinosaur, I expect true crime! Windagoon has collaborated with Plagued Moth, a completely shameful content creator who reviewed snuff films on his Patreon before it was taken down, and has been accused of showing genuine gore content to minors on Discord, and whose main YouTube channel consists of him reviewing censored videos of horrible acts of real-life violence and death. He okay, I'm not going to defend Plague Moth since I do agree that Plague Moth is a scummy human being, but here's the thing. I can't find the receipts for this, but Wendigoon and Plague Moth are not friends anymore. Plague Moth severed ties with Wendigoon because he doesn't like the fact that he's a Christian. He is publicly friends with Shoe on Head, who is a conservative masquerading as a leftist, who has built a career off of lazy anti-woke content complaining about SJWs. My god, are you still talking? Friends with Brandon Buckingham, a gun YouTuber who has been accused of threatening rape. 
showing someone's sick grandfather to get your point across, because that totally isn't a scummy thing to fucking do. Seriously, how do you sleep at night? Also, Brandon Buckingham never fucking sent rape threats to anyone, you absolute cake magnet! He never threatened to R-word anyone. If you guys remember, Sneeko and Brandon were having a little back and forth, okay? They were beefing. Brandon Buckingham never explicitly said, I'm going to R-word women because I'm bored. LOL. No. So it's just taken completely out of context. And on top of that, using a picture of this guy's sick grandpa recovering from the hospital is low. I wouldn't even do this to my biggest enemy. Like, if someone that I made a video on that I don't like you know, God forbid their mom is at the hospital or, or their dad is, and, you know, they do something stupid and I make a video on them, I will never in a million years pull up a picture of their mom at the hospital. So, I'm gonna reiterate, how do you sleep at night? He is friends with Oompaville, a gun-obsessed content creator. Again with the gun obsession. I get the feeling you don't like guns. This guy is gonna have a mental breakdown when he finds out about Madness Combat. ...that has taken advantage of Nakado Avocado's mental decline, for fame, and for money. Okay, there are two problems with that point. One, Nikikado Avocado willingly signed up to be a part of Oompaville's video series. Second, Nikikado Avocado is a fucking character! He doesn't act like that behind closed doors, he's playing a character! Do you know what a character is? Because I don't think you do. He is friends with Mudahar, who argued against Andrew Tate being deplatformed from social media websites, and has recently showcased a great deal of transphobia in his most recent video. <sighs> Are we really doing this? The reason he called Mudahar transphobic is because he drew Keffels in an ugly way. <laughs> That's it. And never mind the fact that Kethels is a piece of shit who scammed her audience. If you call her out, or God forbid, draw her in an ugly way, you're transphobic. Sorry, mate, I don't make the rules. And I'm gonna cut a chunk of this out because his points for the next million years are just Guys, when you're gonna interact with someone I don't like, therefore he's a neo-Nazi fascist, guys! And if I respond to all of these, my brain is going to implode. And I'm only halfway into this! Kill me now! Then, of course, there is his username. To the Algonquin people, the Wendigo is a negative spiritual symbol that is to be avoided and whose name is to never even be said out loud or written down. So I know there's a bit of a hypocrisy there on my part, but we kind of do have to say it for academic purposes, so apologies for that. Starting with Algernon Blackwood's horror short story called The Wendigo, people have for hundreds of years taken the creature and used it for their own means, including Wendigoon in his very name, which is something that indigenous people have been very critical with him now for years. Ooh, uh, well, this is awkward. But do you want to know the whole reason why Needle Dick decided to make a video about Wendigoon? It's because Wendigoon started following him on Twitter. That's it. Right in the midst of this going on, a very funny thing happened, and that Wendigoon followed me on Twitter. I was not following him at the time. He never publicly told people to stop calling me a fan. He never once reached out to me privately. But he did follow me. Which means in my eyes that he 100% knew what was happening because I did tweet about it several times. And then followed me to let me know that he knew. And that he was watching and that he intended to do nothing to stop it. Why else would he follow me in that exact moment? He has never interacted with a single one of my posts, not one like, not one comment. We are not friends. But he does follow me. He follows next to nobody on Twitter. What other motivation could he have had there to follow me in that specific moment, other than to be a method of quiet and deniable intimidation? What other way could that have been read from my perspective? If you think it was entirely coincidental, which he may argue it was, then I've got a sack of magic beans I'd like to sell to you. That was the moment that pushed me over the edge to make this video. Do I even need to say anything? The man follows you on Twitter, and the first thing that comes to your mind is intimidation. Do your parents change the subject when your name gets brought up in conversations? Seriously, every time someone does anything, you always assume there's some kind of malicious intent behind it. And I don't know why some people think that way. Which, Wendigoon left a comment under this video, which I'm not gonna read since if you've seen this video, you know that I struggle with reading big bodies of text. But it definitely shows how much of a wholesome person Wendigoon is. 
He's definitely a better man than I am, that's for sure. Because if Needle Dick had made this video about me, I would have been on his ass faster than you can count to five. And again, don't take that out of context. Honestly, I'm surprised this guy can even count considering he can't even make a constructive critique. Anyway, this guy later ended up taking the video down, but an archive of it does exist. You know the rule. Once it's on the internet, it's there for good. He also released a statement about it on Twitter before privating his account. So, since PJ doesn't have access to the original tweets, we're just going to be sampling Sensitive Society's video. So he says, a thread about the last few days, many people have said very fair criticism of me and my work that I did not appropriately portray people, and I would like to address that. If by did not appropriately portray people, you mean spread a bunch of lies, slander, false accusations, then yeah, I'd say you hit the nail right on the head. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and say this just to get out of the way. Needle Dick is not sorry for what he did. He's sorry he got caught. To Brandon, I do need to apologize to you for two things. The first, you are right. It was wrong of me to use that picture, the picture of the grandpa that we talked about, and uh, I don't think he's sorry. I think he's just sorry he got caught. The image isn't displayed there only once or twice. It's there three times, so you had to do this three times, you had to think about it three times. I really don't think this was an accident, like, oopsie, out of all the pictures you could have picked, you go for that one. It was just such a weird choice. It was wrong of me to use that picture. I included it to show that you and Wendigoon had a closeness. There are other images I could have had used to demonstrate that. Honestly, I don't know what was going through this guy's mind when he did that, and to be frank, I'd rather keep it that way. Says, for that, for what it's worth, I genuinely am sorry. No, you're not. You knew full well what you were doing. Don't try to pull that shit. And then Brandon did respond, and it's a pretty mature response. I would not have done this. I would have been a lot meaner, but I forgive you for thoughtlessly defaming me, but claiming all white people in deep, how do you pronounce this? Appalachia. Should be assumed to be racist, and saying Wendigoon should not be welcome in public spaces because of his assumed beliefs really shows how hateful and insane you are. My god, this guy is literally Twitter personified. He probably whips himself every morning for being born white. You using homophobic language by calling me a low testosterone freak does not change my opinions about you. My base thoughts remain the same even though I should have said them differently. Now, did Brandon call this guy the unforgivable Essler? No, he did not. But the thing is, Needle Dick, you heard the phrase low testosterone and thought homophobic, implying that all homosexual men have low testosterone. What does that make you? To me, this screams projecting. And he says this to Mudahar, your thumbnail art was transphobic. <laughs> I have nothing else to say to that. Now, I am absolutely sick and tired of talking about Mudahar's thumbnail. Like, that thumbnail is not homophobic or transphobic or whatever phobic. That's just the way Keffels looks, okay? Not trying to be mean here, but Keffels does look like the drawing. If anything, the drawing makes you look a lot prettier. This guy sounds kind of familiar to someone that I've interacted with before. Taking you out of context, implying you're a crazy, homophobic, transphobic right winger. Are you guys noticing a pattern here of people that look like this? Just saying. And Mudahar responded and he says, gonna back that claim up. What about painting me as a Tate fat when I wasn't? Wish you the best in a successful future. Mudahar is way too nice. I would have straight up told this guy to fuck off and get ready for his 925 because YouTube is finished. He's cooked. He's never going to make it. He's finished. You know, no disrespect to Mudahar, but I honestly wasn't expecting him to be this nice about this, especially to someone like Needle Dick. And as for getting ready for the 9 to 5, well, my local McDonald's is currently hiring. I already got your McJob application ready, so if you go ahead and fill that out, that would be great. I always try to do my best. I dropped the ball here in how I presented this. My heart was in the right place. I try to live my life with integrity. Cap, if you have watched me for a long time, I hope you know this. Cap, cap, and more cap. I was overcome with anger because I think it's incredibly dangerous that there are some men in horror, talking about Wendigoon, that you cannot criticize without being called an F-slur for days on end. I think that's a very serious issue. Yeah, you definitely dropped the ball harder than Goku. And while I'm not going to defend Wendigoon's fans for calling you the F-slur, that's not Wendigoon's fault. That's more the fault of his fans. Wendigoon has over 3.66 million subscribers at the time of me writing this. With a fanbase that massive, it's pretty obvious that some of them are going to be toxic and unhinged. 
And I don't think Wendigoon should be held accountable for the stuff that his fans are doing since that stuff is widely out of his control. Plus, the horseshit that was coming out of your mouth was not criticism. Calling someone a fascist neo-Nazi skinhead without any evidence to back up your claim, aside from the aforementioned Hawaiian shirt, is not criticism. That's slander, which is grounds to sue. Again, while I'm not going to defend what Wendigoon's fans did, I don't feel sorry for you in the slightest. Can I keep it real here? You're just kind of a weirdo. Like, I don't know how to describe it, you just give me weird energy. But it's not over. So ever since all of this drama went down about a day, two days ago, there's been a lot of Twitter posts calling this guy out. And calling him out for saying some crazy things. So this person says, The dude currently trying to shit on Wendigoon literally said that inbred cannibals in The Hills Have Eyes, the movie, are representing Native Americans or black people because white people. The hill people can be representative of anything that you want them to be, really. They can be Native Americans, and the hills themselves can be allegorical of them being forced back onto reservations. They can be black Americans that have for hundreds of years been forced to live within a dehumanizing system that has balances in place that assure that they never get ahead. They can be anyone who has been a victim of hundreds of years of horrifically violent, white, wealthy, educated progress. So I went to his comment section. It's the same dude that said the rapist, cannibal incest family from Hills Have Eyes were actually the good guys because the innocent family were middle class and white. Okay, now I know this guy whips himself every morning for being born white. Honestly, I would not be surprised if his parents actually did change the subject when his name gets brought up in conversations. I gotta finish it with this comment right here. Let me start by saying I don't like Wendigoo. There are lots of valid reasons to criticize him. Now that that's out of the way, I can't believe I just watched a white guy gatekeep indigenous status. I don't care what the guy did when you started claiming he wasn't native enough to celebrate his heritage. That was extremely weird like if someone came up to me and was like yo oscar you're not mexican enough how dare you celebrate whatever mexican tradition there is who are you to tell me that who are you to tell wendigo that he's native enough mm, wendigo you're not brown enough so i don't think you uh you should have that profile picture i don't think you're indigenous enough that coming from a white guy like him that is crazy. Oh wow, I didn't even think about that. A white guy who thinks he can decide what other ethnicity groups should be offended by is absolutely priceless. I'm gonna bring this up if he ever tries to come after me for my Wendigo persona, telling me I'm not allowed to use it because I'm white even though I'm Latino. That reminds me of those people on Twitter who accuse Asian people of cultural appropriation. And that's where I'm going to leave this video off. Thank God it's over. This was exhausting, which is going to make editing all the more painful. God help me. But what do you think? As always, I strongly encourage you to do your own research on this topic and come to your own conclusion instead of just taking my word at face value. And with that, my name is PJ, and I'm gonna go get ice cream. You ain't never gonna slow me down, cause I feel alive now.